Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, from joining us from all across the world. Uh, welcome back to the next exciting segment of uh, the 12th Social Business Day, which is Glimpses of Social Business, the second part. It forms a, it forms a part of a series of showcases that we're doing with uh, social businesses, which are having a significant change on the ground. On that note, I would like to introduce now the moderator of this session, uh, Mr. Uzair Ahmed, who's a senior associate with YY Ventures. Uzair, please uh, do introduce all your speakers. Uh, you have already assisted <coughs> with timekeeping. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pramita Siddiqui. Hello and welcome, friends of social business, change makers, speakers, and viewers from all around the world. As Pramita Siddiq has already mentioned, I'm Ozer Ahmed, and I will be your MC for the next 30 minutes. Carbon emission, poverty, and unemployment, three of the major crises which is leading mankind towards a path of destruction. We often hear conversations revolving around how social business could be the way out of this global warming, well concentration, and unemployment. There are individuals and organizations out there, or maybe I can call them superheroes, who are leading change across communities, and industries uh, through their social business ventures. In this session, Glimpses of Social Business, we are going to learn about some of the most thriving social businesses and celebrate their contribution and success in creating a world of three zeros as envisioned by Nobel laureate, Professor Mohammed Yunus. In this session, we will be hearing about three social businesses and we'll be watching a video presentation from a leading social business venture. To kick off this session, let us first hear from Grameen Australia. It is my pleasure to invite Mr. Gao Zhang, the president of Grameen China, who's also the chairman of China Yunus Foundation. He has been actively engaged in the field of rural revitalization and poverty alleviation. In December 2014, together with Professor Mohammed Yunus and at the invitation of the Chinese government, he, far he formally launched Grameen China, a social business that aims to help the poor in China especially economically disadvantaged women escape poverty by replicating the Grameen microfinance model. Handing over to you, Mr. Zhang. Mr. Zhang, do you wanna unmute and you, you can start the presentation? Me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, dear Professor Yunus and the guests from all over the world. I'm Gao Zhan. I'm from Guam, China, a micro uh, microfinance organization and uh, dedicated uh, to helping helping long. Uh, women, uh, uh, low-income women in China, uh, build a business to enable financial mobility following the classical Grammy model uh, from Professor Yunus. Uh, Grammy Bank is uh, the number one social business of Professor Yunus. Grammy model not only work in Bangladesh, but also in uh, America, Australia, China, and uh, the rest of the world. We believe that, uh, next page, please. Mm. We believe that uh, social capital is a pr pr primary driver of success of the human. The Grameen Bank has achieved a repayment rate of over 19, uh, uh, 99 preference by using social capital uh, to ensure the successful repayment of loans. Loans are given to Grammy Bank members through uh, groups and uh, uh, weekly center meeting, center, center meeting. Five members 
become a group, and the six to eight uh, groups makes a center. Every week, members have a center meeting. Uh, women members uh, meet every week to talk about their family, education of their children, their business plan, the problems they face in their life and their future. Social capital is created among them through group, center, and the weekly center meeting. Professor Yunus visited a local, local village in China and started a grammy in China in December 2014. Today, grammy China has expanded from one village to four province, um, provinces and 10, 10 branches and more than 6,000 members. Uh, we are work, working with uh, China Construction Bank, one of the biggest banks in China. We will start a new uh, compar uh, cooperation with Bank of Communication in Beijing very soon. There are more banks in China. They are interested in Grammy. One of their one of them is uh, my bank, one of the biggest uh, internet banks in China. Uh, they are providing financial service to SME. If they can work with uh, Grand China, uh, they will become a, a bank for all people. Tomorrow, uh, Mr. Jin Xiaolong, uh, chairman of my bank, will also meet Professor Yunus in the Great China Forum to discuss more about microfinance. Uh, through, our, uh, sorry. Uh, through our experience work, working with so many commercial banks in China, we have, for, we have found out a way to work, to work with them. Uh, we believe that uh, our cooperation will be more successful in, field, in the future. Uh, we are also working with one of the media, one of the most uh, influential media, group, media groups in China. So, uh, so to, to arrange uh, for, uh, forms, promotion social business in China. Every year we have, uh, we have China Yunus Social Business Week. For this year, during uh, the COVID, we, we are planning to organize, organize the uh, uh, China uh, Yunus Social Business Week. We we'll, welcome all of you, you to, uh, to join. Together, we will build a new uh, civilization with, with the world of the three zeros. Uh, thank you. And uh, today is all, also the first L Professor Yunus. Please uh, page, next page. Uh, happy birthday, Professor Yunus. Happy birthday. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Mr. Gaozan. We're really excited about the China Union Social Business Week, and we look forward to that. On that note, next up, we're going to hear about Anunga Construction and Developments Limited. It's a newly formed social business focused to reconstruct the construction sector by implementing sustainable, innovative, and forward-thinking business practices and creating a greener and sustainable future. It is my utmost pleasure to invite Muhammad Ashraful Hassan, who is currently the Managing Director of Onunno. Muhammad Ashraful Hassan has been an integral part of the Grameen family for the last 37 years. And apart from Onunno, Mr. Hassan also serves as the Executive Vice Chairman of Grameen Telecom, Grameen Distribution Limited, Grameen Shamugri, Grameen Knitwear Limited, 
Carmen Fabrics and Fashion Limited. Super excited for your presentation, Ashraf sir, handing it over to you. So mute. I think your mic is turned off, sir. Your so mic is muted. You have to unmute. So, perfect. Got it. Good day and hello to everyone. Happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashok. I will give you a glimpse of a social business name on the Construction and Developments Limited. Now, will take you through my presentation. What is on construction? A company is spun off from Gravin Telecom Trust, engaged in project management and construction for, of all infrastructure development of Gravin groups and others. Maintains quality and a standard of construction within reasonable price, minimize carbon emission and effect of climate changes through eco-friendly construction. Plans to provide housing in suburban and rural areas, and production of eco-friendly construction materials. A full seven principle of social business. Some remarkable project completed by the Ononno team. These all are uh, larger scale projects. I will give a brief overview due to time constraint. The Samajik Convention Center it is used for national and international seminar assembly, etc., in a larger scale at an affordable price. Telecom Bhavan, the corporate headquarter of Gramin companies, implemented by Gramin Telecom Trust and sold near cost price to other Gramin companies. Gramin Caledonian College of Nursing is one of the best nursing and midwifery educational institute in Bangladesh with residential facilities for all female students. So here is two building I, in, on a screen. One is 900 uh, seat capacity academic building and another one is uh, 700 hostel building for female students. So here is some picture, inner and outer view of Gramin Caledonian College of Nursing, just we completed last year. Eye Hospital of Gramin Healthcare Services Limited. These hospitals are established for eye care treatment of all classes of people at a reasonable price. They have four eye care hospital, our team was engaged with these three. Ongoing projects, some are in end of design phase, some are in early construction phase. Samajik Convention Center and Hospitality Management Institute, second phase, to create skilled manpower for home and abroad to these institutes. The estimated project cost of the project is 120 million US dollar. Samajik Hospital and Medical College to provide a state-of-art healthcare services to the mass people at an affordable price and medical education for general students with focus on economically challenged students, especially female. It is the biggest social business projects we have un ever undertook. And the estimated project cost is more than 200 million US dollar. Factory building at Gazipur. To facilitate social business oriented high tech industries of Gramin Group and others. Our future plan out of the regular construction, what we are thinking for future housing in suburban areas. Our plan to provide housing and accommodation for middle income people with a different payment scheme. Model village, providing house in rural areas with a different financial model. Production of eco-friendly building construction materials, alternative for conventional wood. So we are uh, wood is widely using in construction, and we are cutting tree. It is damaging the whole planets. So alternatively, we can produce wood plastic composite, plastic wood, and reclaimed wood. 
alternative for conventional barn clay bricks that use on top soil. So alternatively, we can use it by concrete blocks, AAC blocks, and plastic bricks. Alternative for conventional concrete. Concrete with cement replacement, rice husk, ash concrete, timber creeps. Reuse of West River, reclaim metal for non-structural members, sustainable uh, flooring, trash of floor tiles. So on and on construction and development that tries to reduce embodied carbon during construction by using eco-friendly building materials, reduce operational carbon by avoiding much use of mechanical ventilation and artificial lighting, using renewable energy, rainwater harvesting, wastewater recycling, et cetera, in design, reuse waste generation by reusing waste, minimize damage to the health of the planet. That's all, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. And actually, thank you and congratulations on your contribution towards building a greener and more sustainable future. Thank you very much to Ananda Constructions and Developments Limited. Up next, we have a video presentation from Gramin Shamuk, a nonprofit company established in 1996. It finances rural industries and markets their products, especially those produced in the labor intensive industries in Bangladesh and overseas. It is working hand in hand with Gramin Bank to achieve dream for a poverty free world. May I please request the tech team to play the video from Gramin Shamuk. Bangladesh. The land of mighty rivers, lush greenery, and hard-working people. It is also the home of exquisite handloom fabrics. Handloom industry is the most ancient and the biggest cottage industry of Bangladesh. Gramin Shamukri always believes and working in being a partner of progress of our handloom business in our country. Before establishing Gramin Shamukri, Gramin had neither any intention nor any qualification to get involved in the garment industry of Bangladesh. In the early 1990s, Bangladesh imported handloom product called Matras Check for Bangladeshi garment industry to make garments for North America and EU countries. On the other hand, our local weavers remained half-starved part of the year. Considering the situation, Gramin decided to produce samples by our local weavers and distributed that in America and EU. Following that, everybody agreed that the samples were so good and to some extent even better than the imported fabric. Then, Gramin Shamukri organized local weavers and collected fabric according to local and international demand and established Gramin Shamukri. Gramin Shamukri was established on January 15, 1996 and led by Chairman Professor Muhammad Yunus, Executive Vice Chairman and Director Mr. Ashraful Hassan, Managing Director Muhammad Johurul Haq Biblob and four Honourable Board Members Mr. S. M. Huzatul Islam Latifi, Ms. Nur Jahan Begum, Mr. M. Shah Jahan, and Ms. Nazneen Sultana. Gramin Czech is the brand through which Gramin Shamukri markets its products at home and abroad. Gramin Shamukri currently has 20 sales outlets and four dealers all over in Bangladesh. Rural Czech fabric made through handloom are provided for making school uniform in about 100 schools across the country, including Dhaka. Gramin Shamukri is also selling their products online via e-commerce platform. You can visit at www.graminchek.com. Gramin Shamukri has also one design center where we produce designs according to specification and preferences of the buyers and our local fashion trend. Gramin Shamugri's Fabric Manufacturing Center is situated at Bel Kuchi Shirajganj. Gramin Czech is 100% cotton and environment-friendly fabric and well-known all around the world. 
Gramin Shamugri has also engaged more than 50 entrepreneurs who are directly involved with the industry to making clothes for men, women and kids. Also, Gramin Shamugri is trying to improve the standard of living of the weavers by giving them works throughout the year. The corporate office and headquarter of Gramin Shamugri is situated at Telecom Bhavon, Zoo Road, Mirpur 1, Dhaka. Top level and mid-level management are working in the corporate office in different departments. With the spirit of poverty elevation and accelerating the pace of country's development efforts, Gramin Shamugri's mission is to promote and expand the handloom industry to both local and international markets. Thank you so much to Gramin Shamugri for sending through the video presentation and for their contribution towards creating a poverty-free world. For the next presentation, we are going to hear from our friends from Gramin Creative Lab. The Gramin Creative Lab, or GCL, is focused towards accelerating an ecosystem where social businesses strive to solve the most pressing social and environmental problems of our time. To enlighten us about the exciting things that GCL has been up to lately, we have Maria Ida Palmeri, managing partner, who is, the, uh, who is leading the Gramin Creative Lab with the mission of creating a global social business movement for a world with three zeros, zero unemployment, zero poverty, and zero net carbon emissions. And bring Nobel laureate Professor Mohammed Yunus's legacy around the world through events and projects with social businesses, companies, and institutions. Over to you, Maria. Thank you, Zaire, and uh, thank you, everyone, and welcome uh, here today. So I'm going to share my screen, hoping that uh, my German is helping me here. Yes. Do you see it? Yes, we can see it, Maria. Great. Um, so uh, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present a bit uh, what we do at the Gramin Creative Lab. And I could not start with a bunch of pictures of the people behind it. Um, so the Gramin Creative Lab was founded uh, in 2009, co-founded by Professor Yunus and uh, uh, Hans Reitz, who is a social entrepreneur here in Germany. We are a joint venture between the Yunus Center where we really take all our uh, Grameen uh, DNA, if we can say, and uh, Cirque, which is a uh, creative and CSR consulting in Germany, is a, le is a leading uh, player here in Germany, where we get our, let's say, creative uh, uh, DNA, so to say. Um, we, we say we are, we, we are a young, dynamic team. We're based in Germany, but our projects really span uh, worldwide. Uh, and we um, what we did is, I'm going to get to it in a, in a moment, is various programs across uh, three pillars but uh, the people here are, are really important we say we are at the fourth generation of the Grameen Creative Lab after COVID the old team got a bit restructured so uh, and without the people and the faces that you see here we could have not so to, to say like uh, uh, come after COVID and continue our uh, our projects. Uh, but what do we do? Our mission is uh, to accelerate the ecosystem around social business with the uh, um, vision of achieving a world of three zeros that we, uh, uh, we always uh, mention and we all uh, follow in the ecosystem. This is a picture from uh, last year Global Social Business Summit where we had a lot of uh, country forums like it's going to happen the, this year also Social Business Day. And we really had the whole ecosystem getting together online. Uh, our pillars are three, uh, educate, create, and inspire. So uh, we are this grooming creative uh, lab in the sense that we, we, we like to think that we kind of like uh, approach new players in the ecosystem to the world of social business. We organize innovative uh, workshops complementing the work of the UNO Center in the academia world. Uh, with COVID, we really specialize on system thinking to understand really and dig deeper into problems. Uh, and we developed further programs for youth. Uh, we have now running the Young Challengers program. Uh, it's a program that we do, we do for young leaders around the globe from 18 to 35 years old. 
Uh, and this year, what we're going to explore is how can social business and tech for good help tackling social environmental pro programs and problems. Sorry. Then we have the create pillar. In the uh, create pillar, what we do is we run acceleration and incubation programs uh, with various uh, players. And uh, this year, we're focusing especially on tech for good and health as uh, as uh, main themes. We also work with the companies to bring the social business mindset inside of companies. So we run entrepreneurship and uh, uh, social business programs uh, with uh, employees in the company. We help them create their social business, uh, for example. And then we have the inspire uh, pillar where uh, we have our big summit, the Global Social Business Summit that we uh, co-organize with the UNUS Center. I'm going to show you a bit more pictures. This is our uh, programs with universities uh, and system thinking uh, workshops. Uh, this uh, is at the origin of the acceleration incubation programs that we were uh, uh, doing, where we were supporting also joint ventures like Ramin Danone or uh, Ramin Bat, etc. Uh, and this is our Inspire Pillar, the Global Social Business Summit, where we really try to gather the whole ecosystem every year in a different city. And this year we're going to be in Turin, 7th and 8th of November. Uh, so we are really looking forward. It's the first summit that we're organizing after uh, two years, also in person. But there's going to be a very wide uh, program, also accessible online from anywhere in the, in the world. And thank you so much for giving me the chance to present here today. And can't wait to uh, see you also in the next days and at the summit at the end of this year. Thank you so much, Maria. Super excited about the GSBS in Turin. Looking forward to that. All right, so we have a lot of, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of aspiring social entrepreneurs from the uh, campuses in Africa. So I have one question for all these, I would call the social business leaders who we had as speakers in this session. What's one challenge that you faced while running the businesses that you guys are in? And one advice that you would give to an aspiring social entrepreneur? Maybe I can start off with uh, Ashrafsa. One advice for the future entrepreneurs and one challenge that you have faced in your line of business. Actually, you know, the, it depends on how way he or she is thinking. So, and how way he will play. Challenge is, everywhere is a challenge. If it is easy, there is some challenges, it is easier to solve it. If it's a big challenge, solving this problem in a bigger way. So you should first set your mind that you should, face a challenge and you will just overcome the challenge. This should be your uh, motto and you fix up your mind in this way, then you will uh, overcome the whole things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Incredible advice. Anything from you, Maria? So uh, thinking about, for example, um, a lot of uh, the um, social entrepreneurs that we meet, uh, I'm, I'm going to give an example from Africa specifically, the, the challenges that they always, that always come uh, are, you know, how can you start with lack of resources, uh, lack of funding, and uh, sometimes also the networks, you know, to start your social business. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the answer we always give is twofold. One is start small. Of course, like uh, even, you know, sometimes a, a little bit of uh, or own money or like from a family or you gather like uh, uh, some money from your closest network, just start step by step. Don't think, I mean, think big, yes, but start small. Uh, and, and then connect. There's a lot of, uh, in all our acceleration programs, for example, we always provide a support network of uh, partners that can allow then uh, those social businesses to strive and, and, and grow. Thank you so much, Maria. And lastly, maybe if I can ask about one advice for the future entrepreneurs from Professor Mohamed Yunus himself. Just a word of inspiration, sir, for the aspiring entrepreneurs. For me? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it's an it's example which is inspiring people. It's a, uh, the reason we bring all these uh, entrepreneurs today 
uh, in our social business day to give examples. Examples inspire people, and that's the beginning. Once you feel inspired, some the bug baits you, and then uh, once the bug bites you, uh, then you uh, start running after it. And then the uh, advice that we always uh, provide uh, all our social business entrepreneurs, always start small. Think big, but start small. So, and then you start thinking how to do that. And once you come up with ideas how to do that, uh, you wonder where the resources will be, the question that was raised during the discussion. Uh, that's a very uh, valid issue. That's why we talk about creation of a social business fund social business, venture capital fund, and so on. So that you know that if you have a, uh, an idea uh, which can click, uh, you can go to those funds and make your presentation. That's how uh, GCL and YSB, they are so important uh, because they have the funds uh, and they locate themselves in the areas where people are looking for funds, uh, in the countries they are looking for funds. So that's how they attract uh, all these young entrepreneurs uh, to come up with ideas. Once you see one young person got some money from uh, the fund and others said, okay, uh, it's possible. I can get some money too, so that I can get started. So that has a ripple effect. It continues to expand the number of entrepreneurs you have. So first you have to have the bite that the, uh, the bug has to bite you, inspire you. And then the question of designing it and the financing. Financing has to come from outside. You cannot do it yourself. Unfortunately, not many places uh, have this uh, facility already existing. So through our conferences and so on, we try to inspire people, uh, those who are interested in supporting social business entrepreneurs to follow the path of you know, Social Business YSB and GCL Grameen Creative Lab, what they have done. So this is the reason that we bring uh, the presentations in our social business day. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Start small, think big. I think I, I'm pretty sure all, all the aspiring entrepreneurs have taken a note on that, on everything that our social business leaders had to say. Now, uh, we heard about a, lot of, a lot, about a lot of social businesses in this session. And I mean, they are from different industries. One of them is from the construction industry. One of them is giving out uh, microcredit loans to uh, lower income women. But there is one common thing that all these businesses uh, you know, have in common, and that is they all are trying to achieve the goal of building a world of three zeros. Yeah. I think that is something that should be bringing us all together in the same place. And on that note, I would like to end this session. We still have a lot of thriving social businesses that we want to hear about. And that for, for that reason, we still have a lot of glimpses of social business sessions coming up next. Until then, I would like to hand it over to Prometheus Siddiqui to take it away from here. Thank you very much, yes. everyone. Thank, thank you, Zair. Uh, I would request all the uh, panelists to still stay back. Maria, Gao, uh, Ashraf Sar, uh, Professor Yunus, and yourself as well as Zair, if you could all turn on your screens and give a happy smile. I'll request the tech team to please do a photo as well. Okay. Aziz, did we get the photo? Is it done? Don't hear from Aziz yet. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We got it? Yeah, done. Perfect. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Uzair. Thanks to Professor Thank Yunus. Thank you, uh, Ashraful Hassan, Maria. Thanks, Gao. Thank you all for, and of course, Ramin Chamogri as well for sharing your experience. It's, it was an, indeed an inspiring session. We all got to know about real life challenges that we are facing and how to overcome them. Uh, and on that note, we would like to close this segment and move on to the next one. Uh, the next one starts in approximately 12 minutes, which is plenary 10 cross-country collaboration for fighting climate change. Uh, I would like to hand it back to my uh, fellow MC Zinat Islam, but for joining that session, I would request everyone to go back to your Zoom lobby and tune in for the next one. Until then, stay well, and we'll see you back in about 12 minutes time. Thank you. <laughs>